Hey, hey everybody, BKM Podcast, hosted by BK Mojave, that's me, UFO Report Review 2018, Anunnaki, came across this a long, long time ago, years and years ago, and I've done a couple things about this particular topic, but what I'm doing tonight is something different, I just want people not to forget so I want you to listen to what I'm going to put up and then we're going to talk about just a little bit and then we'll wrap it up. The Anunnaki, also transcribed as Anunnaki, Anana, Anunnaki, and other variations, are a group of deities that appear in the mythological traditions of the ancient Sumerians, Akkadians, Assyrians, and Babylonians. Descriptions of how many Anunnaki there were and what role they fulfilled are inconsistent and often contradictory. In the earliest Sumerian writings about them, which come from the post-Akkadian period, the Anunnaki are the most powerful deities in the pantheon, descendants of An, the god of the heavens, and their primary function is to decree the fate of humanity. In Inanna's descent into the netherworld, the Anunnaki are portrayed as seven judges who sit before the throne of Ereshkigal in the underworld. Later Arcadian texts, such as the Epic of Gilgamesh, follow this portrayal. During the Old Babylonian period, the Anunnaki were believed to be the chthonic deities of the underworld, while the gods of the heavens were known as the Igigi. The ancient Hittites identified the Anunnaki as the oldest generation of gods who had been overthrown and banished to the underworld by the younger gods. The Anunnaki have featured prominently in works of modern pseudo-history, such as the books of Zechariah Sitchin, and in conspiracy theories, such as those of David K. Etymology The name Anunnaki is derived from and the Sumerian god of the sky The name is variously written Anun Anunak Ninana meaning princely offspring or offspring of and the Anunnaki were believed to be the offspring of an and his consort the earth goddess Ki. Samuel Noah Kramer identifies Ki with the Sumerian mother goddess Nine Her Sag, stating that they were originally the same figure. The oldest of the Anunnaki was Enlil, the god of Aaron, chief god of the Sumerian pantheon. The Sumerians believed that, until Enlil was born, heaven and earth were inseparable. Then, Enlil cleaved heaven and earth into and carried away the earth while his father and carried away the sky. Worship and iconography The Anunnaki are chiefly mentioned in literary texts and very little evidence to support the existence of any cult of them has yet been unearthed. This is likely due to the fact that each member of the Anunnaki had his or her own individual cult, separate from the others. Similarly, no representations of the Anunnaki as a group have yet been discovered, although a few depictions of its individual members have been identified. Deities in ancient Mesopotamia were almost exclusively anthropomorphic. They were thought to possess extraordinary powers and were often envisioned as being of tremendous physical size. The deities typically wore melum, an ambiguous substance which covered them in terrifying splendor. Melum could also be worn by heroes, kings, giants, and even demons. The effect that seeing a deity's melum has on a human is described as knee, a word for the physical tingling of the flesh. Deities were almost always depicted wearing horn caps consisting of up to seven superimposed pairs of ox horns. They were also sometimes depicted wearing clothes with elaborate decorative gold and silver ornaments sewn into them. The ancient Mesopotamians believed that their deities lived in heaven, but that a god statue was a physical embodiment of the god himself. As such, cult statues were given constant care and attention and a set of priests were assigned to tend to them. These priests would clothe the statues and place feasts before them so they could eat. The deity's temple was believed to be that deity's literal place of residence. The gods had boats full-sized barges which were normally stored inside their temples and were used to transport their cult statues along waterways during various religious festivals. The gods also had chariots, which were used for transporting their cult statues by land. Sometimes the deity's cult statue would be transported to the location of a battle so that the deity could watch the battle unfold. The major deities of the Mesopotamian pantheon, which included the Anunnaki, 
were believed to participate in the assembly of the gods through which the gods made all of their decisions. This assembly was seen as a divine counterpart to the semi-democratic legislative system that existed during the third dynasty of Ur, circa 2112 BC, circa 2004 BC. The earliest known usages of the term Anunnaki come from inscriptions written during the reign of Dia, circa 2144. 2124 BC, and the third dynasty of Erdot in the earliest texts, the term is applied to the most powerful and important deities in the Sumerian pantheon, the descendants of the sky god and dot this group of deities probably included the seven gods Udakrian, Enlil, Enki, Ninhursag, Nana, Utu, and Inanna. Dot. Although certain deities are described as members of the Anunnaki, no complete list of the names of all the Anunnaki has survived and they are usually only referred to as a cohesive group in literary texts. Furthermore, Sumerian texts describe the Anunnaki inconsistently 14, and do not agree on how many Anunnaki there were, or what their divine function was. Originally, the Anunnaki appear to have been heavenly deities with immense powers. In the poem Anki and the World Order, the Anunnaki do homage to Enki, sing hymns of praise in his honor, and take up their dwellings among the people of Sumer. The same composition repeatedly states that the Anunnaki decree the fates of mankind. Virtually every major deity in the Sumerian pantheon was regarded as the patron of a specific city and was expected to protect that city's interests. The deity was believed to permanently reside within that city's temple. One text mentions as many as 50 Anunnaki associated with the city of Eridu. In Inanna's descent into the netherworld, there were only seven Anunnaki, who reside within the underworld and serve as judges. Inanna stands trial before them for her attempt to take over the underworld, they deem her guilty of hubris and condemn her to death. Major deities in Sumerian mythology were associated with specific celestial bodies. Inanna was believed to be the planet Venus. Yuta was believed to be the sun. Nana was the moon. And was identified with all the stars of the equatorial sky, Enlil with those of the northern sky, and Anki with those of the southern sky. The path of Enlil's celestial orbit was a continuous, symmetrical circle around the north celestial pole, but those of it and Anki were believed to intersect at various points. Akkadian, Babylonian, and Assyrian Akkadian texts of the 2nd millennium BC follow similar portrayals of the Anunnaki from Inanna's descent into the netherworld, depicting them as chronic underworld deities. In an abbreviated Akkadian version of Inanna's descent written in the early 2nd millennium, Arashikagal, the queen of the underworld, comments that she drinks water with the Anunnaki. Later in the same poem, Arashikagal orders her servant Namdra to fetch the Anunnaki from Igujina to decorate the threshold steps with coral, and to seat them on golden thrones. During the Old Babylonian period, circa 1830 BC, circa 1531 BC, a new set of deities known as the Igigi are introduced. 49. The relationship between the Anunnaki and the Igigi is unclear. On some occasions, the categories appear to be used synonymously, but in other writings, such as the poem of Era, there is a clear distinction between the two. In the late Akkadian Atrahasis epic, the Igigi are the sixth generation of the gods who are forced to perform labor for the Anunnaki. After 40 days, the Igigi rebel and the god Anki, one of the Anunnaki, creates humans to replace them. From the Middle Babylonian period, circa 1592-1155 BC, onward, the name Anunnaki was applied generally to the deities of the underworld, whereas the name Igigi was applied to the heavenly deities. During this period, the underworld deities Demkina, Nergal, and Mananu are listed as the most powerful among the Anunnaki, alongside Marduk, the national god of ancient Babylon. In the standard Akkadian epic of Gilgamesh, circa 1200 BC, Utnapishtim, the immortal survivor of the Great Flood, describes the Anunnaki as seven judges of the underworld, who set the land aflame as the storm approaches. Later, when the flood comes, Ishtar, the East Semitic equivalent to Inanna, and the Anunnaki mourn over the destruction of humanity. In the Babylonian Enumulus, Marduk assigns the Anunnaki their positions. 
a late Babylonian version of the epic mentions 600 day Nanaki of the underworld, but only 300 day Nanaki of heaven, indicating the existence of a complex underworld cosmology. In gratitude, the Anunnaki, the great gods, build Esajla, a splendid temple dedicated to Marduk, E.A., and the Lilth. In the 8th century BC poem of Era, the Anunnaki are described as the brothers of the god Nergal and are depicted as antagonistic towards humanity. A badly damaged text from the Neo-Assyrian period, 911-612 BC, describes Marta pleading his army of Anunnaki into the sacred city of Nippur and causing a disturbance. That disturbance causes a flood, which forces the resident gods of Nippur to take shelter and the Ashumshha temple to Ninurta. Enlil is enraged at Marduk's transgression and orders the gods of Ashumshha to take Marduk and the other Anunnaki as prisoners. The Anunnaki are captured, but Marduk appoints his front runner Mashtshurtablim to lead the revolt against the gods of Ashumshha and sends his messenger Nuratagmal to alert Nabu, the god of literacy. When the Eshumshah gods hear Nabu speak, they come out of their temple to search for him. Marduk defeats the Eshumshah gods and takes 360 of them as prisoners of war, including Enlil himself. Enlil protests that the Eshumshah gods are innocent, so Marduk puts them on trial before the Anunnaki. The text ends with a warning from Demkia, another name for Nine Her Sag, to the gods and to humanity pleading them not to repeat the war between the Anunnaki and the gods of Ashumsha. Turian and Hittite Ancient Hittite belief carving from Yazkaya, a sanctuary at Hattaza, depicting twelve gods of the underworld, whom the Hittites identified as the Mesopotamian Anunnaki. In the mythologies of the Hurrians and Hittites, which flourished in the mid to late second millennium BC, the oldest generation of gods was believed to have been banished by the younger gods to the underworld, where they were ruled by the goddess Lelwini. 61. Hittite scribes identified these deities with the Anunnaki. In ancient Hurrian, the Anunnaki are the first. Well, there you go. You know, I could, it could go on and on and on and on, but I don't want it to go on too long. I don't want to make these videos too long you know what is your opinion um about this um do you think they're coming back anunnaki do you think this is real this is history or it's fake it's a hoax you know david ike and uh mr stitchin they're they're really knowledgeable people um they're really smart. They've done a lot of research. I think they think there's something to this. So I'm giving it, you know, a review. And there's, there's possibility to, you know, something is happening. I'm not too sure about, like, Planet X yet. I still have to, um, you know, do a lot more research and see some more things that are happening. I mean, we are experiencing... A lot of things in our world, uh, Mother Nature itself is acting up. That is it because something's coming at us in space, or is it like a natural thing? You tell me. This has become a hobby. Until next time, keep your eyes to the skies and remember wake up and you're not alone.